The day has finally come. Lakers Media Day is here. What questions need to be asked? Stay tuned. You're watching Lakers Report by Chat Sports, all things Lakers. What's up, Laker fam? I'm your host, Hannah Kulik, aka Laker Hand. Now, do me a favor. Before we get into this video, talk about Media Day. What questions need to be asked? Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so that you do not miss a single second when it comes to our Los Angeles Lakers. And also, while you're at it, go ahead and give me a follow both on my Instagram at Hannah Rose Kulik and my Twitter at Hannah underscore Kulik. Okay, let's get into it because Media Day is finally here. I don't know about you, but I feel like I've been waiting for this for literally eternity. The Lakers haven't played a game in about six months and now the season is finally starting. Media Day really is kind of that first step to the season. It's the time when we finally get to see this team come together. We get to ask them all of our burning questions that we've been wondering and questioning all summer. Now, obviously, this season for the Lakers is going to be huge. It's going to be extremely exciting, but there are a lot of questions. This team is very new. We have entirely a new roster. We have a new coaching staff. The expectations are higher than ever. It really is championship or bust. So there are a lot of questions. So today, I thought we could talk about five questions I would ask if I was able to ask the questions on Lakers Media Day. Now, starting with number one, and this is a question to Anthony Davis, one of the most important questions in my opinion, and that is, I know you've expressed that you do not really want to play center this season, but is there any way we would still be able to see you play center at all, even in the playoffs, in crunch time? How does that really look? Are you really truly only willing to play that power forward position? Now, this is an important question for many reasons. One, because first, when the Lakers traded for Anthony Davis, a lot of people assumed he would be that starting center. That would then, of course, free up space for Kyle Kuzma to start at power forward, which would make sense because, as we all know, the Lakers want Kuz to be that third star. But AD was quick to go on and say he actually doesn't like to play center. He does not want to play center at all this season. He doesn't want to, you know, risk his body getting banged in going up against the other team's biggest guys. He would actually prefer to play power forward. Now, obviously, Anthony Davis is the future of the franchise. This entire team is built around him. So the Lakers went out and got big bodies like they re-signed JaVale McGee. They got Dwight Howard. Guys would be able to fill that kind of center void, be that big body, and get the tough banging every night. But the thing here is, is where does that leave room for Kyle Kuzma? Obviously, like we all know, Kuzma is supposed to be that third star for the Lakers this season. And if he is not able to start or get a consistent amount of minutes because AD and, of course, LeBron are playing those forward positions, where does this leave Kuz? So, yes, I understand that Anthony Davis most likely just wants to play the power forward for a majority of the minutes. But... Is he really unwilling to play the center if that means that it could give more minutes to Kuz, a guy who could greatly help this team as well? I think it's an important question, so that would be the first question I would ask AD. But I'm curious. I want to get your opinion. Do you think Anthony Davis should play center if it would free up some minutes for Kyle Kuzma? If you do, type Y down below. If not, type N down below. Now, this leads me to my next question, which would be for Kyle Kuzma. Now, to Kuz, I would ask, I know obviously the Lakers want you to be that third star but where do you think your minutes are going to be and what do you really think your role with this team could be obviously Kuz is supposed to be that third star he thinks of himself as a potential third star he loves to be a Laker but the problem with Kuz the misfortune he's had throughout his entire career is that he's a forward who has always played on this Lakers team that's two main players have also been forwards. We saw this back when the Lakers had Brandon Ingram last year and they had Ingram and LeBron ahead of Kuz playing that forward position. And now we have that same problem with Anthony Davis and LeBron. So where is Kuz going to get these minutes in order to allow him to be that third star? Because obviously you can't be a star if you're not getting a good amount of minutes per night. And for the Lakers, it would be in their best interest to make sure that the Kuz has as many minutes as possible because as talented as Anthony Davis and LeBron James are, they can't do it themselves. They need another guy like Kuz to really step up to help the Lakers get to that next level and ultimately, hopefully, win the NBA championship. Obviously, this Lakers team is extremely deep, but in terms of players who can kind of be that third star and be that third scoring option, it really is Kyle Kuzma. He's a guy who would easily average 18 to 20 points per game, of course, if he gets the minutes. So my question to Kuz would really be, I know you want to be that 
that third star. I know the Lakers want you to be as well, but where are you realistically going to get the minutes? We may have to see Kuz kind of play out of position, which is something that he's had to do. Unfortunately, we saw it a lot last year, but he's really just had to do his entire career. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where Kuz gets the minutes, but I would want to get his opinion on the matter and see what he really has to say. Now, my next question would be to Avery Bradley, and I would ask him, are you ready to compete for that starting point guard spot on this team this season? Now, obviously, the starting point guard spot is one of the biggest question marks going into the season. The Lakers have eight guards. It really truly could be anyone. It really is just going to matter whether or not the Lakers prioritize playmaking or shooting in particular in that starting lineup. Now, I personally believe that with LeBron in the lineup, they don't need to prioritize playmaking because LeBron is already that de facto point guard. He's already that primary ball handler. So instead, they should really prioritize scoring and kind of defending. So that is where I believe Avery Bradley would be that perfect fit at that starting point guard spot. He's notoriously been known for being a shooting guard throughout his career, but he's only 6'2", so he's kind of undersized to play that position. Plus, the Lakers already have Danny Green, who's most likely going to be our starting shooting guard anyway. So we don't really need Avery Bradley to play that shooting guard position. But at that point guard spot, he would really be a perfect fit. He's a good three-point shooter, so he can help stretch the floor, knock down threes. But he's also a great defender, so he would be able to guard the other team's point guards. And then still, LeBron would be able to be that de facto point guard Still handle the ball, bring the ball up the floor in that situation, be that main playmaker for us, but we have Bradley's ability to score and defend. So I think Avery Bradley would be a perfect starting point guard for us, or just a guy who could get a majority of those point guard minutes. But of course, it's going to have to come down to him. You know, like I said, there are eight guards on this team. They're all going to be fighting for a spot. So Bradley's future and as many minutes as he gets with this team is just going to be how hard and how much he's willing to compete for it. Now, this is also a question that we could be asking Alex Caruso because he's another guy that I could see if he gets off to a strong start, really getting a lot of minutes at that starting point guard spot or just that point guard spot in general. So this question would be for Avery Bradley, but also could be asked to Alex Caruso. The whole, are you willing to really compete for that starting point? point guard spot. Now I'm curious though between these two guys that I've mentioned Avery Bradley and Alex Caruso who do you think would be a better starting point guard for the purple and gold this season if you think Avery Bradley type B down below or if you think Alex Caruso type C down below. All right, now we still have a few more questions I would have to ask these Laker players on Media Day, including one very important question to Mr. LeBron James himself. But before we get into those questions, I want to let you guys in on a very exciting promotion that one of our sponsors, BetDSI, is offering us Laker fans. All you have to do is go to chatsports.com slash bet, enter the promo code that they are giving us, Lakers120, and you will get 120% deposit bonus to go play bet for your favorite sports team so go ahead go to chatsports.com slash bet enter lakers promo code 120 and you will get 120 percent bonus deposit this is such an amazing offer i want to make sure that you guys do not miss out especially now that we are getting closer to the season starting so go ahead and do that and again huge thank you to our sponsor here at chat sports bet dsi for letting us have such an amazing opportunity to go win some money now my next question is one that a lot of people i'm sure are going to be asked and are very interested in knowing it is aimed at Dwight Howard now I would ask Dwight Howard how do you see your second stint with the Lakers going and are you really willing to take reduced minutes and come off the bench obviously by now we all know Dwight's history with the Lakers we all were shocked when the Lakers brought him back but I think all of that initial shock is over and now we're just really hoping that he is humbled he's learned from these past couple of years really struggling in the league and that he's going to come back and get this second chance with the Lakers and really make the most of it. But of course, it's gonna be really interesting to see because Dwight Howard has the potential to be the Lakers X Factor, you guys. He's a tremendous player. He was one of the best centers in the league, one of just the best players in the league a few years ago. He's an eight-time NBA All-Star, an eight-time All-NBA player, four-time Defensive Player of the Year. He truly can be a huge difference maker and a big X Factor for this team, but it is all going to depend on how he really approaches this season where he's at mentally because as we all also 
also know he's really known for having a big ego being a cancer in the locker room the last few years every team that signed him couldn't wait to get rid of him so there are a lot of question marks regarding Dwight and his ego but if he is willing to kind of put his ego aside and just play for the better of this team man he really could have a big season and really kind of rejuvenate his career and this could really end up being Dwight's comeback season which I know a lot of us are hoping but of course it's really going to come down to his attitude so that would be a huge question one that I would need to ask Dwight Howard if I was in there on media day now my fifth and final question would be to the king himself Mr. LeBron James and that would be are you really willing to take a backseat and let Anthony Davis lead this team and be the primary scoring option now obviously according to reports LeBron is a hundred percent fine taking that backseat really letting AD lead this team shine be the primary scoring option but is that really the case? Obviously, it's much easier said than done. You know, LeBron James is one of the best players to ever play. He may end up going down as just the best player to ever play basketball. He's always been the number one guy on his team. So it's really hard for a guy of that stature, that elite type of player to all of a sudden just take this backseat and be fine, you know? So maybe LeBron is saying that now but is he really willing to do it reportedly lebron knows that his career is kind of entering the final stages and that he knows the best thing for himself his health of course and just for this team is to let anthony davis really take over obviously ad is just 26 he's entering his prime it's really his time to kind of excel his game and really enter that next level of superstardom and help lead this lakers team but obviously, much easier said than done. Is he really going to be able to do so? Obviously, if I were to ask LeBron this question, he's going to say, um, absolutely. Of course, I'm willing to do whatever's best for the team. It's AD's time now. You know, my time has come. But I'm willing to kind of take a backseat and do whatever we need to do in order to win a championship. But like we've been saying, much easier said than done. So where I would definitely ask that question, it would obviously be something that we would kind of just have to see play out as opposed to all of these questions. You know, at the end of the day, all of these guys are going to be saying exactly what we want, we want to hear. They're going to be saying all of the right things, but what they're really going to be willing to do, we're just going to have to kind of wait and see how the season plays out. But all I know for sure is I'm extremely excited that media day is finally here because it means we are one step closer to the season starting and I cannot wait as I'm sure all of you guys can't as well but that is going to be it for my five questions I would ask the Laker players if I was there on media day but comment down below if you have another question that I wouldn't ask that you would maybe ask these players I would love to hear what you would want to ask as well thank you guys so much for watching this video don't forget to give it a double thumbs up don't forget to subscribe here on chat sports and the new chat sports Lakers YouTube channel as well and until next time Laker hands out bye guys